So today marks the day that Sean Talks Tech channel is venturing into a new genre of tech, smartphones, and I guess like most tech enthusiasts, I really love reviewing phones. I love the tech, I love the genre, but sometimes it's just really hard to get into the game due to the steep price tag. Nevertheless, today marks a start where we're taking a look at a humble ultra budget smartphone from Blackview and to see if their A55 model is worth your hard earned money. So the A55 is sent over to me for review by Blackview. So although these were sent over to me, no money has exchanged hands and this review is based solely on my honest opinion about them. So this smartphone retails for about 389 Malaysia Ringgit or about 92 US dollars. So this is a sub 100 US dollars phone. So we should adjust our expectations a little bit when we are talking about them. So if you're interested in getting this phone, definitely check out my links in the description below. So the A55 is a large-ish phone, not iPhone Pro Max size, but still big enough for most people's requirement. And comparing it to my iPhone 12 Pro here, you can see that the A55 is about one inch taller. So honestly, it feels really nice in the hand. It's quite slim and tall. So ergonomically, these are really good. And the back of the phone has a very nice textured plastic with the Blackview logo right here and also a speaker grill right at the back here. So on this phone, you're going to see that there are three cameras here but I have no idea how those cameras get activated and I think Blackview put them there as dummy cameras because only one camera which is the top one here is the real camera and I guess they just didn't want to have a phone with a single camera in this age so that's pretty much what you're gonna get two dummy cameras and you're also gonna get an LED flash right here so something that we don't see in modern phones nowadays is a rear case that actually pops open so if you just flip this open and you can see that this phone opens up to be like a 2005 phone that you can swap out the battery but in the case of the Blackview A55 the battery is actually screwed in and you cannot easily just swap it around. So in order for you to put in your SIM card as well as your micro SD card you have to pop out the entire back. So once you're done with putting in your SIM card as well as your micro SD so you just have to pop it in and it will snap back into place. Something you don't see very often nowadays. So at the front of the phone you're gonna get a 6.53 inch IP LCD display with 720 by 1600 resolution with a pixel density of 269 pixel per inch. It's honestly not the sharpest screen out there but actually it's pretty good from a normal viewing distance so you don't really feel that it's too blurry. So the screen here only goes up to 400 nits and as you can see I've already maxed out my current screen brightness and with this bright uh, light source on top of it if I were to look at it from directly with the light source on top, it's really quite hard to see. So even in dimly lit rooms, this is not the brightest screen. So you can imagine under direct sunlight, you can basically forget about using them. So one of the most disappointing part of this phone is the charging port. And if we take a look here, Blackwheel gives you a micro USB port. And in today's day and age, this is really not acceptable and I don't even want to comment about it. But I guess that's the end the pursuit of keeping costs low so i guess that's what you're stuck with so the phone also comes with a single microphone at the bottom here next to the charging port so you don't get noise cancelling mics with this phone and for those who love using wired earbuds or headphones definitely you'll be very happy because the a55 still supports a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so in terms of the battery life with this phone it's not that impressive for such a low powered low featured phone with a pretty huge battery size so the a55 comes with a 4780 milliamp hour battery which is really big and it's rated for a full day of battery life and about seven and a half hours of battery with continuous video streaming but to be honest i used this phone for a day and it barely got me through the afternoon with notifications scrolling social media and watching some videos and to add on to the misery i had to look for a micro usb cable to charge it up so Blackview somehow thought that this phone is fluid and smooth as they market this quite a lot on their website. Smooth is like the last thing that you're going to think when using this phone. So even simple tasks like launching apps, animation, multitasking, all of these are quite slow. You can see that if I click here, it takes a while to load. Uh, the animation here is not all the smoothest, right? So you can just turn this on, not the smoothest. You can see how it does lack quite a little bit when I'm interacting with the phone. So here I have one of my videos playing and you can see that 
this video is not playing at a very high resolution. So this phone actually supports playback of up to 1080p only. So you're not going to get 4K viewing here. And the problem is that even if it's playing at 360, it's smooth. When I push it up to 720, and when it starts to render at 720, and you see this phone suddenly lags up and it doesn't keep up with the uh, audio. So that's something to take note of. So the funny thing when I was testing this phone is that there are certain times where the phone really acts up and is lagging everywhere. For example, sometimes when I were to play YouTube videos at 1080p, the maximum resolution that I get, uh, you can see that it's quite slow and it does lag and you can see that sometimes it's smooth. So I'm not too sure how they optimize the software inside here, but sometimes you get a smooth playback, sometimes you're gonna get a laggy playback. But I think that for most people, like you can see all the animation now, it's quite laggy. But I think that there is a particular demographic of people that might not care so much about this performance. Maybe older parents or someone who just needs a phone, and maybe if you have tons of patience, this might be the phone for you. So this performance is mostly credited to the 4-core MediaTek Helio a22 mt6761 chipset that they use and the phone also comes with 3 gigabyte of ram and 16 gigabyte of internal storage expandable with a micro sd card up to 64 gigabytes Honestly, looking at the specs, it feels like you're looking at a phone from 2005. So the phone uses a nano SIM card as you saw earlier. So if you have one of those larger micro or standard SIM cards, then you need to get a new one. And as far as I'm aware, there is no water resistant rating for this phone. So it's best that you keep them really dry. And for those who watch my channel and have Bluetooth earbuds with Bluetooth 5.2, you're not going to be able to enjoy its full potential here since the A55 only supports Bluetooth 4.2. So the Blackview A55 is running Android 11 with Blackview's own skin, the Doke OS 2.1, which is a simple skin on top of the Android system. Nothing too fancy here, which is good. And whether or not this phone gets Android 12, I'm still not too sure, but I don't think that the processor can withstand more demand with a newer software version. So in terms of the camera, you're going to get a simple 8 megapixel Sony sensor at the back of the phone. So like I mentioned, the three camera that you see there, only one camera works. So if I were to put my finger on the top camera, this is the one that it covers. And if I put my finger at the bottom as well as the right camera, it doesn't cover it. So even if I were to zoom in, you can see that it's mostly a digital crop. And I can just put my finger on the top sensor here again, and it's still covering that one. Uh, I put my finger at the bottom at the side, doesn't really cover it. So it's not using two different lenses for the zooming, it's mostly digital zoom. So you're gonna get photos of a maximum resolution of 2448 by 3264 and videos up to Full HD 1080p. The front camera is a 5 megapixel camera shooting photos up to uh, 1920 by 2560. So if I were to swap it around, so this is the camera that you're gonna get and the front camera here is also uh, shooting at Full HD 1080p and the only difference here that you can see with these two cameras is that the front camera doesn't have autofocus. So if I were to press on the screen right here, you can see that it's not doing anything. Um, but if I swap the camera behind and you can see that I can actually do an autofocus. So that's the main difference between the two different lenses, uh, the front and the back. So finally, another important thing for a phone is the sound quality. And it's honestly really soft and not that high definition as well. And the problem here is mostly with this rear mounted speaker. And if you place your phone down on the table like this, it basically blocks out the speaker and it becomes very muffled. And that's why newer phones have side mounted or bottom mounted speakers. Uh, and Blackwheel should really take note of that. So either way, the sound quality here is nothing to be amazed by and they do sound very flat, lack definition just sufficient for you to listen music or watch movies without too much expectation for it to sound good. So overall, will I buy this phone? No. And if you're a millennial or younger, I don't think that you would even consider a phone like this. But I think there is definitely a market for this phone, someone who really wants to buy it for probably an elderly parent, a relative, or maybe someone who wants to buy their seven-year-old a phone that they don't mind in them destroying. So this may be the phone for them. And I can only think of these scenarios that anyone will buy a budget phone like this. So let me know in the comments down below, who would you think these phones will be good for? And also let me know what am I missing in this phone review and I would love to 
to improve them in the future and when I start to review more and more phones. So that is it for this review. If you find this video helpful, smash that thumbs up button, share this video everywhere and if you haven't yet subscribed, do consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.